Hello, and welcome to the Inflectra webinar on using SpiraTest, our test management solution, with NeoLoad, the load testing system from Neotis. In today's webinar, what we're going to do is set up SpiraTest together with Remote Launch and NeoLoad to have SpiraTest schedule and run a load test on the NeoLoad controller, run load test, and have the results come back into SpiraTest. We will also configure some SLAs so that we can track different performance metrics and have those report back to SpiraTest as a pass or fail. So, what we have so far set up is we've downloaded and installed NeoLoad. And we've installed it onto this machine. And we're going to be using the sample NeoLoad test that comes with NeoLoad. And this test uses a, a web application to display the weather right here. We've also downloaded and installed Remote Launch. Remote Launch is the add-on that will allow Aspire Test to communicate with NeoLoad. So this is NeoLoad, and we're going to be using the sample test and the sample test has one scenario, and it also has some SLAs defined, service level agreements, so that we can track whether, whether the test results match our expected performance. So this is our uh, sample test. We've got a virtual user profile set up, and populations are set up, and the monitors are all set up. And this sample comes with NeoLoad, and you can use this yourself. On the runtime tab, we've got a single scenario called Scenario 1. And if we go to our SLA manager to see our SLA profiles, we've created a demo SLA. In this SLA, we're going to track uh, four different metrics, and we've set up some pass and fail rules for the request response times, the page response times, total errors, and error rate. And just to verify, we can actually play this scenario through directly within NeoLoad. And this will begin the actual testing within NeoLoad. And then we'll do the same thing afterwards in SpiraTest. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure that your load test actually works before you attempt to integrate it with SpiraTest, just to make sure that it works as you expect. And then while that's running, once you've installed Remote Launch and entered the license key, it's going to sit in your system tray down here in the bottom right of the machine. And you can double click on it to bring up the uh, Remote Launch console. And by default, it will just mark with green, and it will let you know the next time it's going to communicate with SpiraTest. We've, we've reinstalled the SpiraTest server uh, on this local machine, or you could use a uh, SpiraTest instance hosted in the Inflectra cloud. We've set up a, a login and password so that Remote Launch can communicate with SpiraTest. If I hit test, it's going to communicate OK. And the other thing we do is we set up a unique name for this machine. So that way, if we have multiple machines running different tests, we can uniquely identify them. We call this one VMPC1. We've told it to communicate every 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, it's going to call SpiraTest and ask for new tests. And it will look ahead uh, four hours. So it will get four hours worth of future tests. And these are all configurable values. Also, we've asked it to run any tests that are overdue. So if there's a communication failure, and it gets a test that's running in the past, the schedule for the past, it will go ahead and run it. The other thing we did is we installed the NeoLoad plugin for Remote Launch so that it appears in this tab. To do that, you go to the location where Remote Launch is installed, typically in the C program files x86, in Flectra, Remote Launch, Location. And in there will be an extensions folder that will initially be empty. And in there we put in our NeoLoad plugin. And Remote Launch and the, the Neolo plugin can both be downloaded from the Inflectra website. Once you've done that, when you go to Remote Launch, you will have this option in this special Neolo tab to choose the location of Neolo, click on the Browse button, browse to where Neolo is installed to the bin directory. And also, we're going to include the PDF version of the report as well as the web report. 
And so I've checked that box as well. So we're all set here. Meanwhile, our loader just run. And if you look, it's actually played, and there's been a couple of passes and failed. Which is good. So we have a pass, we have a failed and acceptable. And we have some nice graph graphical metrics showing the, the step function as we apply the user load and the response times. So now we're going to close the load down. And we've raised that remote launch. So the next thing is Spira test. So going to the web application, we've gone into Spira test. And ahead of time, what we've done is gone into administration. And we've created a new project for this demonstration. You could use an existing project as well. And what we've done is we've gone into the test automation section. And we've made sure that the new load engine is active. By default, we'll be installed with your system. Just go in here and make sure it's active. If for any reason you have an old version of Spyro that doesn't have this, you can just choose the option to add it and just make sure the name and token is called Neoload. And that's how it will know which plugin to use within Remote Launch. Having done that, what we also will do is go to View Edit Users, and we've created a dedicated user called Neoload to actually run the test. It's called Neoload Runner. You can either use an existing login and password, or you can use a dedicated one. It's up to you. We would generally recommend using a dedicated one if possible. So this is the login and password that Remote Launch is using to connect. So this username here has to match the username in Remote Launch, right there. And the other thing we have to do is make sure that this user has access to this project. So in project membership, we've made sure that the new load runner is a member of the project. And it typically will need to be marked as a tester or higher in terms of role. We've made it manager just to be on the safe side. Okay, so that's all configured nicely. So the next thing we'll do in our project is set the different machines. Now you'll notice when I go to testing automation hosts, we have one machine to find. So that's the machine that we're going to go run these tests on. Now we could have a second machine if we wanted. So we could have a, a test host PC2. And the important thing is this token name, that needs to match the name of the machine that Remote Launch is running on. So if I go into Remote Launch, Client Setup, this machine name here has to match the token name. So I can install two or three different machines with the remote launch, and they can all use the same new login and password, but they do need to have unique token names. Otherwise, SpireTest won't know which machine to run the test on. So now we've got our automation host set up. We next need to go to the testing section. And in the testing section, we create a test case. And we're testing this application, which is going to be displaying the weather. So we call it weather test. If I click on it, it's got a name. We haven't bothered setting up the fields, but you certainly could. The important thing is to have in the automation section the link to Neoload. Um, you don't actually need test steps for this because it's an automated test. So you can just go in here. You will choose the engine Neoload. You'll choose the type linked because we're not attaching a test script. We're just simply linking to it. And then we're going to include the location of our project. So this needs to point to where the load test can be found on the machine running Neoload. So we went to our C drive where we've installed it. We've created a folder. See Neolo project, Neolo sample, test NLP. That's the Neolo project file. And this is what we've cut and pasted into Spyro test. Now, the other thing we can do is tell it which scenario to run. Because you may have more than one scenario. If you remember earlier on, we had a scenario called scenario one. So using the pipe character to separate the two, we simply put the scenario name after the uh, project file. So that's all we need to do here. And we hit Save. So now we've got an automated test case that links to the, the Neoload project and scenario. So that's how you set the test up. But the next thing is going to be is how do we actually run this test? So next we go to Test Sets. And this is where you'll set the, the actual test set that's going to be used for scheduling. And you can have more than one test case in your set. So go to Load Testing. This is the test set. All we've done to it is add a single test case using the add tests, added the set, hit add, and there's our test. It's added to the set. And now what we'll do is make sure we choose a machine name, so PC1 or PC2, in this case PC1, and we'll now choose the status, which is not started. And then we choose the date and time, so we'll do that's today's date, and the time, 
BCT2, we'll choose it to run in the past. So it will force it to run. Hit save. That's all we need to do. And to go back to remote launch, remote launch is going to be running on this separate machine, waiting for instructions. And it runs every 30 minutes by default. You can make it more frequent if you wish. So in 20 minutes time, it's going to communicate with SpiraTest. When you're doing initial setup, you can test this out by doing force poll. That tells it to try immediately and not wait for the 20 minutes. So let's do that. It's found the test case in the test set. So now it's beginning the actual testing. And it's going to launch the command line version of NeoLoad. So unlike the one that we had before, you're not going to see the user interface with the graphs. It's going to run in the background. Now this may take some time. So you'll just see in the console, you will see it running. And when it's done, it's going to log everything into Spira. Well, it's still running, so you can watch the console and see it running. Once it's finished running, this window will disappear and the results will get sent back into SpiraTest. Okay, just finishing. Generating the report. Generates the XML report, the HTML report, and the PDF report. You'll also notice that this little blue checkbox appears, and that means remote launch is done. Okay, so while that's running, let's go back to SpiraTest. You'll notice if I hit refresh, the status is moved to completed. And if I go to my test runs tab, and hit refresh, there's a new test run. Now it's failed. Or my test case has failed. So that's good. So that shows that we have a new result. So previously it had passed, now it's failed. But let's dig down further. So we'll click down onto the page and we'll see this is what happened. So we have defined, as you remember, some SLAs. So the first one was the page res was the request response time. And it came in, I think it has to be five seconds, 0.5 seconds um, or less, and it did. But the page response time needed to be about six or seven. 0.6 seconds or less than it clearly isn't. It's, it's much much bigger, so that failed. We also have some other metrics set up, which we marked as caution. So depending on the SLA you set up, you'll get different results back. And what the system does, it looks at all the results coming in for each of these metrics, and then it takes the worst case and makes that the overall status. 
So that way, any requirements or other items in the system that you have will pick up that status and be reflected. You can also see further down in the console output, the top five response times and the, and the top five maximum response times. So this is the summary information that we get. We get the IRAs, the alerts, the response times, and then we get the, the SLA metrics, which drives the status. Now, oftentimes, we're going to want the detailed testing report. The nice thing is that's obviously available on the machine running NeoLoad, but just for more convenience, we actually attach that directly to the test results in Spira. And if I click on the link, it brings it up. And so I can actually view right here my test report, my detailed test report. So that way, anyone logging into the website of SpiraTest doesn't have to find the actual machine it ran on. All this information is now accessible in the web. All the metrics, the, the errors, the graphs, all of the rich reporting that you expect from NeoLoad is now available in a central repository where you can access it 24-7 with just a web browser. And the other nice feature, of course, is when you go back to the home page of the project, you can see your test status and your results. And if you've got any requirements to find, you can entirely these back to your requirements and then have the, the requirements pass or fail. So that way you've got an integrated view of all your test cases, both the uh, functional test cases, the manual test cases, and the load tests, all in one place. And that's how you use NeoLoad with SpiraTest. Thank you very much for, for watching and listening, and we'll, we'll hope to see you at another webinar in the future.